broke it. Did you just talk to the bat? <laughs> you know what? I, so when we used to be able to drink uh, during karaoke, I would talk into my, bar, my beer bottle sometimes. <laughs> hey, everybody. The yeah, first sign of a problem. <laughs> totally. How we doing? So Matthew Cohen, you've come in not only just in your inimitable style, but you're also dressed up as... I'm excited about it. It's awesome. Um, Jeffrey D. Morgan is playing a real badass with that. Did like a 20 minute monologue, and the episode, someone's gonna die. I hope it's Carl that said it aloud. Who's Carl? Which one's Carl? Carl's a little kid that's got the hair that's kind of like a very emo version of Zac Efron. Oh, okay. I just want to know where he gets the conditioner to keep it that nice in that world. You know? like, it's like he's got a bucket of conditioner. He's like, shh, look at me now. Eye patch, beautiful hair, don't give a damn. And so you want him dead. <laughs> I want him dead. Well, somebody's got to die about it. That's the thing. I know, but so, I, know, I got it. Could be Carl. It's, it sounds like it might be. If Matt has his way. It's not Carl, apparently. Just something. Is the season premiere this weekend? Yeah. That's what I'm saying! Uh, but this isn't about The Walking Dead, this is about Supernatural! Matthew Cohen, how's it going on General Hospital, the show you're constantly shooting? It's, go it's going super duper, except for the fact that it's taking me away from karaoke in Times Square. I know. It was move on to the top. I know, this is the first time you've missed the Halloween Speaking karaoke. of other shows that we're doing. How the hell and what is happening with Kings of Con? These guys. Kings of Con. I love you with a like, talk show host at the back. You know, you're, you're the most threatening talk show host in the business. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage my two <laughs> friends, Robin and Richard Spade Jr. Welcome, come on down, come on down, have a seat right there. <laughs> Guys, let's get to the big question that everybody's wondering about. Kings of Cod. They're wandering. They're wandering. Kings of Cod. A lot of people have been wandering about it. What is happening? We go sit down. We say sit down. Stop wandering. Stop wandering. <laughs> um, is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. Um, November 15th, it will premiere on Comic Con HQ. Yeah. Boom! And uh, there are 10 episodes. 10 episodes. Matthew Cohen is in a, a solid batch of them. Boom. Very excited. And uh, yeah, on November 15th, uh, they're going to run the first two back to back. And then uh, there'll be uh, eight more after that. And they'll release it every Tuesday, uh, every subsequent Tuesday. That's right. Uh, and we couldn't be more jazzed about it, how it looks. We can't wait for you all to see it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kings of Con is a show that Rich and I uh, wrote, uh, sort of loosely based on our behind the scenes antics here at these supernatural conventions. So. Uh, we're very excited, a lot of this uh, cast of characters are in it. We all kind of play heightened versions of ourselves, at least some of us do. And some people play completely other people. Like... Matt Cohen? Like Matt Cohen. He plays a character named Matt. But he, he, Don't he's, ask us how we came up with that. Yeah. It's a process. How would you describe Matt's character? Matt, how would you describe your character? Narcissistic turd. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. Uh, so the opposite of of the of, of real Matt Cohen, Matt Cochran. His hashtag is hashtag me. Right. right. <laughs> Not hashtag you. Wow. Uh, but we're we're super excited about it. Can't wait for you to see it. Um, and if you don't have Comic Con HQ, right? There's an app and stuff, right? You can just go to comic-conhq.com. And download the app. It's going to be on your Apple TV. It's going to be on your Roku. It's going to be on your uh, your Amazons. You know what I'm saying, Robbie? All the Amazons. It's all the Amazons. <laughs> Come on, what you got? It's going to be there. And you're going to download it. You can download it on your telephone, Robbie. I've been trying to get it on my rotary phone. It's a long, not, it's not ongoing happening. process. I'm going on the phone with AT&T. Yeah. They're not helpful at all. Um, you can stream it, although on my dial-up. <laughs> It's pretty slow. Anyway, get yourself some Tom Cutting's Q and watch the show. It's going to be awesome. November 15th, it premieres. 
Let's get to some questions, shall we, everybody? Let's try over here. So my question is for all of you. How do you feel about fans coming up to you on the street or in public? And how do you feel about them approaching you? Would you rather they not? Or it just makes me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> when a fan goes up to me and says, excuse me, I, I know your work and I like it, I'm like, oh! <laughs> Leave me be. I usually wear a sign that says, don't talk to me. I try to have a lot of it. Um, it's the best thing in the world. Lovely. We love it. We love it. It's uh, uh, such a compliment, and we don't, we don't take it lightly. Uh, because, you know, we're all three of us uh, worked very hard for a long time and didn't really get noticed. So we uh, take it as a huge compliment. Yeah, so, it's awesome. Yeah. And, and people who come out and speak to you are always there to say nice things and bring lovely energy into your space. It's always very cool. It's always very complimentary. Matt? Especially cool if you're having lunch with somebody who doesn't quite know what you do. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm lunch with people who don't know what you do. What do you know what I do? I'm like a... I'm like a spy, super spy. Like that. What do you do? You're gone all the time. Oh, sorry. Hold on one second. I'm an actor. I stop eating this this organic salad and talk to this nice fan. Matt, people come up to you. Bring the ass. Are you good with it? I I I'm I'm on, on on board with both of you guys. I feel super lucky. I think it's awesome that people like me. <laughs> and they don't they don't not like me, and that's a good thing. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. I know. It's always better when they like you as opposed to not like you. <laughs> I prefer the liking a lot. It's handy, man. I mean, no, with all due respect, dude, with a face like yours, it's good you have a talent. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know what you'd do. <laughs> other than walk down the street. Next question, next question. Suspense is killing me. <laughs> this is for Richard. Hey! Uh, does Jason know that Doom and Sugar is Batman? Can you say that again? <laughs> does the Trickster know that Doom and Sugar is Batman? Does the Trickster know that Doom and Sugar is Batman? <laughs> it does, uh, <laughs> Doom and Sugar does affect his behavior and he acts out uh, in erratic ways. Um, he does know, he makes bad choices, and I think the lesson here is don't make bad choices. I think. Know, know that your body's a temple and what you put into your body matters and it's going to affect you adversely. Robbie, I'm also talking to you. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful because too much sugar will act, will make you, will, it'll make a person on each bite. I mean, you know, after Halloween, you have a few too many buttercups and maybe at school you're acting a little squirrely and the teacher has to shut you down. We've all been there. You know what I'm saying? Man, they used to call me Mr. Squirrely. <laughs> oh, squirrely buttercup, they called you. Um, yeah, so I, mean, I think the Trisher knows. I think he chooses not to follow uh, solid medical advice and, and the advice of his dental professional. Uh, it, the dip Trickster is going to lose all his teeth. Fortunately, the guy who plays the tix, Trickster has no visible teeth, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> he could lose all his teeth and no one would know. Um, however, no, I, don't, I think the Trickster knows this. I think he chooses not to... Uh, not to make smart choices, and so to you I say, young man, make smart choices. Don't eat George candy. Stay in school. Cross on the green, not in between, and eat your greens. Thank you for the question. It's like nothing else I've ever done. Uh, there have been shows that have worked out that had great fandoms, but uh, this truly is like nothing else. It's it's hard to des describe to people what you know this is is like. What this weekend, these weekends are like. Um, I mean, you truly are the, the best fans of, of anything out there right now. Or these supernatural fans, truly. So it, it just it doesn't compare.
And this whole experience has changed my life, it's changed all of our lives. Um, you know, I'm working now with my best friends that I didn't know before the show. I meet so many people every weekend that are such wonderful, lovely people, so supportive, incredibly supportive of me, my band. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I've gotten through crazy sort of dips and twists and turns in my life via and with the fandom. It's, it's just been crazy. So yeah, it just, it kind of blows away anything else I've ever experienced in terms of fans of a show that I was a part of. Um, so I feel very blessed to be a part of this. Uh, not to take anything away from any other show I've worked on, but this has been unreal, very unique. The God and Gabe comment? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll see you. I just heard about that today for the first time. Yeah. I was like blown away by it. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. We've shot a few of those. In the, and the, the, the art is awesome. Yeah. In those things. It's yeah. super clever. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy cool. I mean, it's awesome. Like, I think it's just, I mean, it, it, we're always, all three of us, everybody actually, blown away by the caliber of artistry that is demonstrated in this family. It's shocking. When you see people with actual talent <laughs> coming up to us and having them, us ruin it with our signature, it's um, it's really amazing. The God and Gabe comics are super clever and Very uh, clever. so well drawn, so well written, and just I don't know how many volumes there are. I remember I was thinking there's three. two, three. There's three. Yeah. Um, they're well, they're great. So it's it's awesome, and and it's you know it's one of the of many pieces of art that cross our 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 autograph table or get mailed to us or whatever that just truly blow me away. We'll see fans do shirts. We were joking that like, if we say something clever on stage or something we think is clever, by the time we get off stage, somebody has drawn it and made a shirt out of it. Right. It's fantastic. It's a coffee cup. And the person right over here is drinking coffee out of it. <laughs> it's really great. Matt will show up on to a convention, you know, and Rob and I will be on stage. Before we get off stage, Chris is taking photos of him, and they're uh, been tweeted out. And we're like, "Oh, Matt's here, and he's wearing maroon." Oh. <laughs> like, there's so much, there's so much a brilliant artistry demonstrated by by you folks, and it's, it's constantly flattering to sometimes be the subject matter of it. And even when I'm not, or we're not, it's awesome to see what you people do. We're very talented people. We love it. We love it. More of it. Yeah. No. He had been to photo ops, 
And, and I'm retelling the story that Rob told in practice a lot. That a woman came up to him and said, I really like your hair. What, 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 what color would you say it is? And Robbie's like, I don't like it. It's brown. <laughs> it's brown. And she, she said, brown and gray. <laughs> and they started to walk away and turned back around and went, brown. And I said, why? Well, I don't know how she came to that conclusion. <laughs> um, but the great, the great part is, it became a running gag between us. Well, I guess ongoing. It's still running. Really <laughs> well, a, a year later, we'd be having a conversation about something, and Rob would be doing a contract negotiation for something else. And I'd text him, I'm like, well, listen, man, if you need to get legal help, you should use my, you know, I'll give you my lawyer's number, you should work with them. He's like, great, who is it? It's, it's the law offices of Brown and Gray. And then that way to be, and they text him, Brown and Gray. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite one was the Mountain Dew one, though. That thing this Mountain Dew commercial, uh, Robbie, you never, this, this logo they come up with, it's awful. Is it? Yeah, oh, it's horrible. Cool. No, no, Robbie, you don't understand this logo they come up with. This is all in text. It's great, crazy. It's bad, bad logo. Cool. Want to know what's bad about it? I guess so. I don't know what this has to do with me, but okay. The colors on it. Really? Yeah. The colors. The colors, Bobby. I don't, okay. But what colors are they? Brown and gray. And then a new text, brown and gray. It took me longer to get him to ask a question than to actually edit the commercial. Brown and gray. It's good stuff. All brown and gray. Hi. 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 I can fly. Uh, I'm pissed off at Rob. No, um, hey, do, do Gabriel and I... Right. Right. Uh, do, you play God on the show. You didn't bring me back. You didn't have time. Time is up here. Rob was like, I'd love to, but... I didn't, I didn't like that. I mean, like, I'm well, you know, like, you enjoyed saying it, though, didn't you? You had a real gleam in your eyes. He almost looked at the lens and winked. I don't have time. Time we don't have. How many years it's going to take? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, yeah, similar to all oh, there, Gabriel and me. Um, hmm, well... Uh, uh, I haven't been in a lot of porn. <laughs> Not quality stuff. So I don't have that going for me. Um, I, uh, um, you're a rascal. You're I'm a lot a like rascal. a trickster because you're a rascal. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scam. <laughs> I'm a rascal. That's, I, I, that's a lot nicer than you usually are. Usually you say a-hole. I like that you went with rascal. I know, every time I say a-hole, I feel bad for it. Because that's, that's, it's, you're not an asshole. You're, you're a good guy. But you're an effing rascal. <laughs> okay, so Gabriel and I are both effing rascals. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean... I'm trying to think if, if I see a lot of similarities there. I, I, I um... Uh, I'm not sure I do. I think I'm better in front of my issues than he is, so we differ in that department. I'm not sure I've ever gone into hiding. Um, I'll go with Rascal. I'm a Rascal. Like him. Like he is. Thank you for the question. Any advice? I'm an actress. Yeah, just if you really like it, keep doing it. No matter how many doors slam on your face and how many people tell you, you'll never be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's not, I mean, that, that's good advice. The truth of the matter is, there's no easy path into this career. We're all still carving our paths as we speak. It's not like we're resting on our laurels. We're constantly reinventing ourselves and doing different work and finding different ways to get our work out there. So. I mean, it's just an ongoing 
process. And I think what separates people who work from people who don't work a lot of times isn't talent, because there's a lot of talent out there, it's, it's drive and resilience. Because you're going to be told you're wrong for the role, you're going to be told you're too short for the role, you're too ugly for the role, you're not good enough, and you're, you know, you're going to be put down and chopped at a lot. So you have to not believe the hype. You have to have enough self-confidence to be able to get yourself off, off the ground, dust yourself off, and go back in the, in the game. And that's what it's about. Because it's a, it's a, doing the job is fun and not, I mean, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's the, it's the great gift you get when you get the job. Getting the job is the hard part. Getting in the room. Getting those opportunities is the hard part. And that's where they, that's where you get beat up. You get beat up on the road. Once you're there, it's great. And then once you finish it, you're back out on the road looking for the next thing. So it's a, it's an ongoing, uh, challenge in that regard. So you have to, I always say your sense of self has to be very, very strong. Yeah, all that. Um, fortunately, though, uh, because the day we're living in right now, there are a lot of avenues for you to take, and there's um, you actually can. When we started out, you really you had no power, no control. Uh, if you wanted to make something, you'd have to like find a film camera and shoot it. And uh, and now you can take your phone, and if you're creative enough, you can film something and get it on YouTube and and share it with the world, you know, so you do have that opportunity. If nothing else, it's just an outlet to be creative um, and yeah, practice. You practice your craft yeah. for film and television a lot easier now than you could when we were coming up, because you're not developing film, you know. It's all, all everything Robert has said is true. If you have designs on being a storyteller in film, whether it be acting, directing, editing, whatever, the very thing you use to book your ticket for this convention can shoot 4K video, can make something better than what we had access to. And it's at your doorstep. You can practice, you can work on it, you can get better, you can improve, you can watch your work and, and make you know uh, changes based on what you see. It's a great tool. You and your friends can get together and work on it. Film editing software free on any Mac. You know, it's it's very easy to access. So do that. So there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Hey. hey. No, he really didn't, because he was possessed by Lucifer. <laughs> um, I feel like that went pretty well. I feel like things with Lucifer on, on the men. I mean, sure. It's always going to be kind of a cold shoulder thing going on with him, like kids do. And I'm okay with that. He's got to be who he is. I feel like we, 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 we got somewhere. We worked together on the same team, which felt, it felt good. I know he'll run off and do his... This thing, you know, like he likes to do, but uh, I felt like that was, a, that was a big step in our relationship. Uh, I would tell you about, uh, about Cass, uh, except that I really don't know. I don't know, I mean, I, even if I knew, I couldn't tell you. But I really don't know. Except even if I did, I couldn't tell you. So I don't know. So you're saying you might know. Right. But, so you might be full of knowledge right now, not sure. Right, but the fact is I don't know. But even You're if I saying knew, that knowing that if you knew, you wouldn't say. I'd have to lie and tell you I didn't know. But I can tell you I love Misha Collins, and the relationship between Rob and I and Misha Collins is really strong. We talk a lot. Who cares? Like Lucifer and you and, 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 and Cassia. I'm dying to know, Rob. Look, you, hey. I know we have a lunch scheduled, and you'll tell me more then. Exactly. You're going to have to wait like everybody else. So, fingers crossed that I'm actually coming back to the show soon. Because I don't know. Oh, okay. See what you did there, Captain Sullivan. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is actually for Mr. Spate Jr. Um, so we all know that you have lots of nicknames, like Rich, your name is Richard. But the one that's always confused me is Dick. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is... I bet it doesn't confuse you in the slightest. <laughs> Because you worked up the nerve to come here and ask this question. My question is, how do you get Dick from Richard? 
Nothing heavy. I probably don't over this off the shoulder number. Right. <laughs> Taffeta. Some, there's some classic. Yeah. But with a wrap. Uh huh. So if I'm outside the traffic. Right. You know, I can cover up. Right. Perfect. Yeah, I'd go with that, I uh -huh. think. Or, in, in, or maybe, depends on what we're doing, mm -hmm. where you're taking me. Right. <laughs> maybe a, a lame. Uh -huh. Like, you know, like sure. a gold lame. Right. That too, is it over the top? Not at all. Perfect. You need to be fabulous. Thank you. So it's something like that, and I'd go with a nice brunette wig. Great. I've always wanted to be a brunette. Okay. I'd always, I've always wanted to have a full head of hair. It would just be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It would be fun to be people like that, like Jared does. And I would wear, I would wear so many high heels. I wouldn't want to walk awkwardly. And I don't wear flats because that's that's not going to be good for the form. Right. I want the whole you know body to work, work right. So right. I go with like medium heels, <laughs> closed toe, because nobody nobody should have to see these kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we're good. I think we could have got a uh, Mac. Uh, my 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 uh, uh, drag queen drag queen drag queen. <laughs> drag queen name would be Skippy Griffin. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty obvious I would have uh, pasties and a merkin on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For those of you who don't know what a merkin is, Google it now. <laughs> all right. See how none of them are reaching for their phone? They all know what a merkin is. <laughs> they don't want to know. Uh, I, would, I would be Ski Glenwood. Ski Glenwood, and I think I've got a boa. Whatever I wear, I've got a boa, because <laughs> Ski Glenwood needs one. And maybe glasses. And a nice long blonde head of hair. Glasses with, like, like prescription or like shades? Uh, prescription. Uh -huh. Like a 50s style librarian, sort of up like this. Glasses. Yeah, cat eyes. Yeah. Cat eyes. And long blonde hair, no gray. You'd be unrecognizable. I know. This is not Rob, I'm just keep loving it. Let's go back to the beginning though, Rob. When, 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 why did you say it like you were picking up a prescription? I'm, I'm Ski Glenwood. Is that Ski Glenwood? Glenwood. You might know my father. I saw you in a dress. I'd my father you. is Stephen Glenwood. I'm Ski Glenwood. His daughter. <laughs> what, do you want to know anything else? No, it's good. I, I wear a pantsuit. Oh, that's nice. With a bow. With a ball. Damn right, I do. Okay. Rich, what's your, what's your first name of yours again? Cuddles. Cuddles Saxon. Cuddles Saxon. Cuddles. That's S A X O N. Cuddles. 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 I go, Cuddles Saxon plus one? We should be on the list. Thank you, Rich. Cuddles Skipnitsky. You. Hey, y'all. How you doing? Good, you? Good. My question is for all of you. So I tried to ask this to Sebastian earlier, and he didn't really. Yeah, that's his thing. <laughs> so, what has been your worst wardrobe malfunction to date? Oh, I got a good one. I got, I got one too. I to when Rob and I were, were uh, in Phoenix, we all immediately checked our flag up there. Right? I hope I don't have to answer right now. Um, Rob and I were doing in the Phoenix convention this year. We were shooting the opening credit sequence for Kings of Con. We had a, a camera guy with us and a couple of cameras going. And uh, at one point, the stage was a little higher than this, and there was an uh, a, uh, aisle in the middle, and we were going to shoot. When Rob, you know, Rob runs around the crowd in the mornings. We were going to get a shot of Rob doing that from like a low camera angle, and he was going to run down the aisle towards the camera, and jump over it, and that was a shot. And we actually did the shot, and it's in the opening credits, but. We were setting up the camera, so the crowd is full, because it's right before Jared and Jensen take the stage, before their panel. And so we set the camera up, Will, our camera guy, was doing his thing, and the crowd is as full as it is now, even more so. And then I come back up to jump back on the stage, and jump back up to the stage, and tear my pants from here to here. And immediately come up the stage, and I'm like... And time to bring the boys out. Right, and your biggest fear at that point was... I made the mistake of going backstage, and Jensen's going... <laughs> and, I'm squirreling. and I said, I just tore my pants from here to here. And, uh, and then I thought, sweet Jesus, why did I just tell Jensen to go? They're going to have the pants made. And that's their thing. Yeah. That's how they go. Oh, Rich uh, has a hold his pants. Let's be sure we make sure that Rich doesn't get embarrassed. Yeah. It's, oh, Rich has a hold his pants. Let's be sure we rip them the rest of the way off. <laughs> in the middle of our oh, did Jerry ever go? 
because he's the well, one. Well, I, that's the you one. Don't tell Jared your weakness. No. <laughs> no, don't. And I did not tell Jared, right. but I thought, Jared? Jared? That's what that's you what know? He did, thank God. Or Jared just forgot him again. He got lost in his hair. But we I came up here <laughs> to like, introduce the boys. And I'm like, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jared. You know, I, didn't want to, I, mean, I didn't want to fly, I didn't want to notice. I had people over here like you, I didn't need to. It was awful. That was my worst convention yeah, wardrobe of all time. I don't Kids? I uh, saw very similar actually. I, was, I went to an audition. It was a producer, director, it was a callback. Um, early on in my career, one of the first times I got called to like a big producer session. And uh, I had a pair of my Abercrombie and Fitch jeans on. Oh. <laughs> Coming out of the parking garage, there's like a row of, of, of parking, you know, blocks. What do you call it? Parking at the front of a parking spot? Parking blocks. Parking blocks. <laughs> and I went to leap over one and I went, whoop! And I was like, man, I felt like a, quite a tear. And I kept on walking. No big deal, thinking, all right, I'll use the bathroom before I go in the room, get my nervous pee pees out. <laughs> I go in the bathroom and uh, I turn around and it's ripped from the top of my belt right down the middle of my butt A little piece of information I forgot to mention at the time I was commander. <laughs> Not by choice, but because I was out of quarters and I didn't have my own the washer and dryer machine, so I had no choice. It was, it was, to be sanitary, I didn't wear underwear, okay? <laughs> judge me. So what did I do? I panicked, I immediately started sweating. I was like, the first call back, I'm gonna screw it up. I took a bunch of paper towels <laughs> and I, I tightened my belt as much as I could and I like layered them from my belt hanging down <laughs> over my thing, over my big over my butt crack. I went in the room and I did like, like so you guys are the producers and the doors right here and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Nice to see ya. Uh, luckily you don't have to play both sides of the audience when you're in a room. Did the audition. What we did. That show was The O.C. It was my first oh, guest star. Yeah. With full white butt. <laughs> Just not wow. out of the situation. It's a great story. By the, the only, the only, I was going to say the only hole in that story. <laughs> Actually, one of the other holes in that story. Exactly, a couple holes in um, that story. Matt <laughs> Gordon. It was not by choice. I just decided not to wear underwear. I mean, it was my choice. You had underwear at home, you just decided not to wear them. It wasn't like somebody, you got mugged on your way to the, give me your boxers. It was a choice. That's all I'm going to say. You know what I mean, not what I say, Mr. Spade. Whatever. I feel like a lot of handsome dudes go commando. It's just a thing. I don't do it anymore. It was literally, it was a laundry issue. Do that? I don't know. I don't know. I layered up, Robbie. Easy. <laughs> um, gosh, I, I mean, those are both great stories. The only thing I can think of is, uh, I mean, there have been, God, so many awkward things with me and clothing, I'm sure, and I just can't think right now, except when I was uh, a sophomore in high school, I got up the guts and asked uh, Jenny Coates, who I had this huge crush on, <laughs> to the dance. And she was so out of my league. And she said, yes. Said, yes. And... So I got, I went and bought myself a jacket, like a nice like, jacket with a tie, and I could take her to the dance. It was going pretty well. I, we were, I think I was just in the friend zone. I was in the friend zone for her. <laughs> anyway, the vice principal of the school was always really nice. He was like, hey, Robbie, I'm fun. Yeah, he's like, hey, come to my office. Oh, no. And in his office, uh, mid-dance, you know, yeah, what, what's going on? I was like, yeah, turn around. I still had that, the clip on the jacket that they put on it so you don't steal it. <laughs> uh, I, I paid for the jacket, but I still had that clip. It was just like on my jacket. Somehow I missed that in my nervousness. I'm so I'm like, yeah, Jenny Coates. Totally, like, you know, dive for Jenny Coates. I had the fucking <laughs> clip. <laughs> the big old thing. You can only way to get in an office like with a jackhammer. <laughs> so I worked on that clip. It took him about an hour to like, wedge it off of my jacket. And I, it was over with Jenny. I mean, she's like, where were you? I was like, oh. And then we went out with, with her again. Now, the only silver line in that story is when we graduated, she put something in my yearbook like, I always thought maybe we should have dated. And I was like, you don't tell me that. We're going out to college. I love you, Jenny Coates. The visual that comes in that story, like you went off to Get it off! Burn! And she in the middle of the 
the dance floor, it's so hot. Oh, yeah, somebody's already drawing the shirt of you with the clip on. Yeah. <laughs> And I already like the shirt, I've already heard it. <laughs> this guy's got a coffee cup over here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. That was you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Hi. Hi. I heard that you all are going to be on the Minds soon. True story. Yeah. Right. He wants us to describe, so Lua is asking, uh, we're on Criminal Minds. She wants us each to describe what the other characters playing without giving away too much. Like I'm describing what your characters play? Yeah, we basically would do it, to say what Rich and I are doing. Can, can, yeah. can you say? I don't know. Sure. Well, listen, you, you explain what you're doing. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to. We don't know a lot about what the other person is doing. Yeah, we didn't, we were We are all in it. On it, but Matt, what can you say about your character on uh, Criminal Minds? Uh, the Onboard. I mean, other than I'm, I'm going to be playing Gary Sinise's son, because that came out of the press. <laughs> and that's all you'll say. Let's leave it at that. I honestly think if I say any more, I'm going to really screw it up for myself. And then Robbie and I too play two buddies who get ourselves in a pickle. Really? Good. Yeah, we have Rich and I are in the same episodes as buddies in a pickle. Oh. I hope we're going to do a little interview last question. We're doing that right now. Thanks for giving me an opportunity. I You're welcome. It. My name is Marissa Marr. I'm a film student at Georgia State up the street, so I luckily got to be here. I wanted to ask each of you respectively <laughs> about possibilities to become something more in the area of production. What would be your advice? Oh, well, it's kind of what we were saying earlier. I mean, I think it goes to what we were saying earlier. You have every opportunity in the world to make films and tell stories in the, in the, in the phone in your pocket. I would, I would do that as much as humanly possible. There are two types of people in production. People who talk about, about making movies and working in the film business, and people who make movies and work in the film business. So you have to decide what you're going to do. Work for free. Which is, I, for years and years and years, I worked in art departments and sound departments and, and acted in plays and short films, all of which I either did for free or paid for the experience. And you have to do that. It's just that kind of business. It's very competitive. You have to be in a great city and state for it. I also wouldn't move to North New York or LA, I'd stay right here. There's a ton of opportunities right here in, in the great state of Georgia. Um, and I would take advantage of those opportunities and get yourself on as an unpaid intern on a, on a shoot. If you have a specific department that you're targeting, I, locations, great. And that's something you, you, you find the, the location department of even small indie films and do it for free. You know, sign up, be on that department for free, you can get, and then if that person moves on, they'll take you with them. You know, the goal is to work into the paid positions, but what they're going to look at is your work ethic, how committed you are, how into you are, and how much sheer leather you're willing to put into it, because these, those are valuable positions, so you've got to fight for every slice of it, and, and your passion, let your passion drive you, stay focused, and never quit. You're welcome. I'm Richard Spain. I'm Rob Benedict. It's back to Trench coats. <laughs> <laughs>